hi welcome to my channel taco yaki taro today is march 10th 2023 9 23 a.m um let's see before i get started i just want to remind anyone that's watching that these messages are not going to resonate with everyone and that's okay if they resonate with you gives you clarity great if it doesn't you know um don't force it to be your story right um I pray to God and call upon Archangel Michael and any ancestors, angels, and spirits of the highest white light that love me unconditionally to continue to protect me and my family during this time. Please help us see things clearly and to help us remove the fog of illusion that has led us on a false path in the past. Amen. All right. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to get to it. So, yeah. I hope everyone's having a great week, though. It's Friday, so the weekend is finally here. Yay! Um, weekends are, like, you know, the best, so. Alright, so let me see. What should I use? Hmm. Alrighty then. Hold on, my okay. I had a little itch in my back. <sighs> oh boy. I had some pretty interesting dreams last night. Um, yeah, that's all I will say. I will say, um, it's like the coolest thing lately. Um, in my dreams, I'm like, not even on this planet. I don't know. Um, and cause like, instead of like time hopping, I guess is what I call it when I'm like in different, not time zones, but different timelines, I guess. But there's this thing that's been happening lately that I've been doing, um, it's like planet hopping like I'm going to different planets um, I've been seeing some beautiful things and I've also been seeing things not so beautiful you know but um, I don't know it's pretty cool um, I also read a name well I read a name in my dream last night. Um, I had a bunch of X's and V's and Z's. Uh, what is it? The Van Exelen? The Vansel? Something like that. Uh, I gotta remember, but um, something about Jupiter too. It was like, um, anyways, let me not go any further. <sighs> All right. what comes out for the collective it's like the way I want to like 
if I were to tell you the dream, I'd have to describe it in such a way where I just, I don't feel like I have the time. I mean, I do, obviously, but like, I don't want to spend the whole video talking about like one part that I've seen in a dream. Wow, it's, but nothing wants to come out. Okay, because I heard keep going. Mm. Um, somebody around you, this is not your energy collective. This is not you. But somebody around you, um, for some of you, it could be a past lover, an ex, a, a friend, a family member, a coworker. You will know who this person is, right? Whoever this person is, um, they don't want to move on and they don't want to let go. Um, for them, this is somebody who they just can't let go of anything. And they can't let go of trauma. They can't let go of pain. They can't let go of control. They can't, they can't even let themselves go and be free and be just like go with the flow. They can't. They can't do that. Um, this is somebody who, I don't know, I hate to say it, but like when something bad happens to them, they, they make that bad thing their entire personality, right? It's like, I feel like I talked about this before. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, so-and-so cheated on me. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, what happened? Well, so-and-so, you know, they did this, 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 this. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. When did this happen? You know, like five years ago, 15 years ago, 40 years ago. 40 years ago. And that's the thing. They're still talking about it like it just happened. So for them, this person, in a way, it is still just happening because they're still reliving that. Um... They're going through that trauma every day by thinking about it, reliving it, wallowing it. It's like, at some point, you got to move on, right? Like, yes. And the thing is, like, I'm not saying that get over it, right? But I also am saying that. But that's a whole different thing. Whoever this person is, it's like they make pain and trauma their whole identity. Because, I don't know, it's, it becomes comfortable for them. Anyways, the cards, um, we have 41 and 42. It is safe to let go. You are surrounded by love. Time to move on. Flow with the river. See where it takes you. But they both came out in the reverse. Um, so 41, 42, 5, 6. This person could be 56 years old. Or something has been going on between four or for five and six years. They've been like a ball and chain with their trauma. It's like they just carry it around with them everywhere they go. Everywhere they go, all right? And I say it like that with a bit of an exhaustion and annoyance because it is. All right, people like this, like I'm not, we've all gone through something, right? We've all had our trials and tribulations. But there comes a point where you decide you want to heal because you don't want to be carrying that with you for the rest of your life. This is this person. They like carrying around their trauma. They like it. It's like they make... It's like those people on social media, they make mental illness, like, their personality or, like, an aesthetic, but it's not. Like, I, I don't understand that. Like, mental illness is not a joke, right? Um, so... When people, this is something like that. It's like they make their trauma their personality. And it, at some point, people are just like, are you going to move on? Like, because the way they talk about their trauma too, it's like it just happened, right? They'll tell you a story. And you're like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so sorry, right? You, they, you give them the energy of sympathy, pity, um, compassion. Oh my God, 
pat it like a hug, right? They love that. I'm gonna find out this happened eons ago. And then that, not only that, but like it makes the people that they're telling these stories, it makes people feel some type of way because it's just like, like what? You know, I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not downplaying trauma, mental health, none of that. I'm not. What I'm saying is that whoever this person is, it, it, I don't know, man. It, they just make it their personality to the point where it's just like, do you even want to not talk about that? Like, that's all you talk about. Your trauma, your whatever this, whatever this person is going through or has. I feel like they make it to, they, oh my God. The way they talk about it or the way they carry it around with them, it's like it just happened. It's like them holding out um, a newborn baby and they're just like, look at, I just, look at this trauma that I'm holding on to, right? And they, they like nurture their trauma. They nurture their mental illness. And it's like to a point where it, like it doesn't ever heal, right? Like, I hate to say it like that, but it's like, at some point, you're going to have to heal. Like, do you even want to heal? Do you even want to go from it? Do you even want to let go? Um, It's like those moms that, like, you could be a whole adult and <laughs> your mom is just like, here, let me wipe your face for you. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, I guess this is what I'm talking about now. I feel like this is about three to five people that are like this. Some more than others, but yeah, about three to five people. And if they don't talk about it, they, just the way they act, it's as if, you know, their traumatic event just happened or their illnesses are like this person all right hypothetically speaking for example cancer all right i'm gonna throw that in there hypothetically speaking again if this person had cancer 20 years ago right they still act like they just had cancer like yesterday right like oh yeah when i was going through chemotherapy oh when was that about 24 years ago oh okay and here's the thing too, um, so I'm not knocking cancer survivors at all, alright, congratulations, that's amazing, um, hopefully you stay that way, but the advice that this person is trying to give other people, um, it doesn't, it's useless in a say, I hate to say it like that too, but it's useless because, um, First of all, they're not even trying to heal from their situation, all right? So because they're not trying to heal from their situation, they're not trying to get better, they're not trying to be wise from it, they're not trying to learn from it. They're trying to stay in that state of um, betrayal, hurt, pain, sickness, illness. They're trying to stay in that state. So this person, they're trying to stay in that state of being sick and unhealed and vulnerable and like a victim. And then they're trying to give you healing advice. It's like poison. No offense, but they don't know what they're talking about because how can you give other people healing advice when you're actively staying a victim to something that happened to you long ago? You know what I'm saying? It's like it doesn't it doesn't really match up. Like how can you give healing advice when you yourself are keeping yourself in a victim, unhealed, toxic state within you? And not only that, but if they had taken the time to actually heal, this person would know that the advice that they're giving, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? It's kind of like they're giving advice on traditional parenting, but traditional parenting has been proven to be like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's like cancer. If this person is trying to give you advice on cancer, it, there's so many other treatments out there nowadays than they did 20 years ago, 40 years ago, that the advice that they're giving you is from the 1960s, right? Medical advancement has been rapid since then. So it's like the advice that they're giving you, it's useless. It doesn't, it's, it's useless. You can't do anything with what they're telling you. 
anyways, um, I don't know, this person, they're just stuck, um, in their trauma, in time, what the hell is wrong with this person, like, and then they have the galls to try and give you advice, but it's like they're talking, but they're not talking about anything, you know what I'm saying? It's like people who just talk to talk, right? Like this person is trying to give you advice, but you know that the advice is giving you is BS. Like, what are you giving me advice about? What are you talking about? What are you telling me? You're talking to me, but what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's like everything that comes out this person's mouth or these people's mouth is just garbage. Like it has, with the way times are changing, the world is evolving. Um, the way medicine is changing, the way mental health is progressing, the way people are raising their children even is changing. It's becoming healthier. It's like whatever they want to give you, it, it does not fit with this world anymore. It doesn't. So it's like, what are you telling me? You're not, if they want to give you health advice, they're trying to give you health advice from like 24 years ago. It doesn't, it makes no sense now. Parenting, parenting advice, it makes no sense now because it doesn't work. Uh, mental health advice, you don't even know how to heal. You're trying to give me healing advice and tips, you know? Um, like this person would be like, oh, you should try this medicine, but that medicine hasn't even been in circulation since like 2010 or some shit, right? Like, come on. I feel like, you know what? I, it's like this person hopped from like, I don't know, like, 2001 they hopped from like 2001 and immediately jumped to 2023 and was like oh i have the best advice i have the best parenting tips i can give you mental health advice um the best medical advice i can give it to you and you're just like all that shit is old like what are you talking about go back to 2001 right it's like this person wants to like they i don't know like they want to be ahead of their time or something they want to jump ahead or they want to they want to make it seem like they're far more than what they really are but there's like hold on people really see i had to change it it was a commercial people really see that it's just like what are you saying like what are you talking about like, what you're saying doesn't make any sense because, um, you know, there's gentle parenting and conscious parenting versus traditional parenting. Conscious parenting, for example, has been proving way more effective than traditional parenting. Yelling at your kids and hitting at your kids, it does nothing. Talking to your kids and understanding your kids, wow, right? And then with cancer, there are many other ways instead of just immediately going to chemotherapy or... You know, there are many other trials and whatever shit like that. Mental health, like, there's so many other ways and, you know, there's therapy and just a bunch of other stuff. It's like, what are you talking about? It, it makes no sense. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like when this person talks, you're just like, oh, all right, what now? Meanwhile, I've been talking for like 18 minutes, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, Takoyaki Taro, get to the point. This is my point, you know? Be careful of people like this. It's like, these people, they just wanna talk to talk. Um, You know what I was hearing the other day? These could be elders, older people around you, like um, aunties, uncles, grandmas, grandpas. Um, these are the same people that they want respect immediately and they want you to see them as wise but the wisdom that they, they're they talking about, it has no merit these days, right? It's it's like um, respect is given, not earned to them. And uh, what was I hearing? It was um, elders. It was about elders, right? Like uh, bad or toxic elders. It was like these people, they, they want you to listen to them and take their advice. And it's more than that. It was a uh, oh, fudge, fudge, fudge. <sighs> what was I hearing? They want you to, um, they want the title of like being wise and um, all knowing.
but the shit that they're telling you, it makes no sense. It's it's like they're stuck in their time. And then you look at them, like you can physically see that they're in 2003, but their advice is from like 2010 or, you know, 1985 or some shit like that. That's the advice that they're giving you from that time frame. And meanwhile, these are the same elders that just like, oh, you have to respect me because I'm wise and I'm all knowing. But in reality, like what they're telling you, the advice, the wisdom that they're giving you, it. Like, what are you saying? Because that's not relevant to these days. Like, they will try to give you parenting advice. Oh, so if your child, like, for example, like, they're just like, oh, I wouldn't let him talk to me like that. Give him a, pop him on the mouth. What? He didn't say anything wrong. Or she didn't say anything wrong. Like, she's just voicing her opinion. Mm-mm, that's for grown folks. What? Like, the the, sh the advice that they're trying to give you or, like, the counsel, it, it makes no sense. Like, it, it doesn't matter. It, like, because nowadays, like, why, why is it so wrong for your children to have their own opinions or advice? They're growing humans. They're people. Right? Like, I remember, like, um, I grew up in a household where it was normal for your parents to hit you, right? And I remember, um, <laughs> to be transparent, I remember I used to start hitting back. I don't like when people put their hands on me. I don't care who you are. And so I started hitting back and I was at church one day and this one girl told me, she was like, you shouldn't hit your mom because that's your mom. I'm like, but she hit me. And she was like, it doesn't matter. She's your mom. She could do that. And for some reason, I'm just like, what? That doesn't make, even as a child, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. That's like, you got to take the abuse and go with it. Like, what? That makes no sense. So, you know, anyways, I felt like I had to say that face to face. All right. Um, yeah, 22, 23, 22, 24. We have Lord. Lord, take charge with authority. And then we have, oh my God, we have stag. But it's in the reverse. Trust and thrive in the reverse. So here you are. You, I feel like you collective, you listen to God, the divine. That's, that's all you're being told to do. Just listen to the divine, follow the divine. That's it. These people, these elders, and they like to use the fact that they're older than you because they feel like these are the type of people that it's kind of like Matilda's dad. He was like, I'm right, you're wrong. I'm big, you're little. And there's nothing you can do about it, right? I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. It's like they get off on the fact that just because they're older, that, that gives them... Um, like the automatic credibility of being wiser, smarter, the advice is more, it's, it's just, they're, you know, the fact that they're elders, they just, it's like, okay, you're an elder, but you're, are you actually like an elder? You know what I'm saying? With stag in reverse, it says trust and thrive. These people, they, I don't know what is going on with them, but they, for a fact, do not trust the divine because if they trust the divine, they would not be stagnant in their life. They would not be stuck, all right? They're not thriving. They're in the same position that they were in 1985, in 2001, in 2010, right? The same mindset, the same jobs, the same whatever, right? Meanwhile, you listening to the Lord, you're not... There's nothing around you. You're not holding on to shit. You're letting go of things. You're moving on. You're thriving. These people are stuck in a time that no longer has any merit to today's world. They don't want to let go to what they know. I feel like these are the people that are trying to give you like um, bad advice or false counsel or they just want you to listen to them. They, they want you to listen to them. But you know... You're like, wait a minute, what you're telling me doesn't align with what the divine is telling me. Not only that, but what they're telling you, you know, you can feel it. Like, example, like they're giving you advice, but the advice on parenting that they're giving you is traditional parenting. 
that's so toxic. That's a bad way of parenting. I don't care what anybody says. Traditional parenting does, parenting does not work. Understanding your children is what works best. Like, why is your child doing the way instead of like, oh, you did this, pop, 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 right? It, it, I don't know, man, but whoever these elders are, it's like three to five people. It's like three to five people. You know what? I had a dream uh, last year about a bus, a school bus. And um, there was, I think, three women and two men. And, and like their inner child, they were crying, crying. And um, they were like on a school bus stuck. And the bus driver was being mean to them, like abusing them. These kids, oh my gosh, kids, these adults, their inner child is horrible. And I don't mean that to be mean. I'm just saying that they didn't have the best childhood. It's, it's three to five adults. It's three women and two men. I had a dream about this last year. And it's like, they want to be seen like they can save everybody, but they're the ones that need saving. They're the ones that need saving, not you. There's nothing holding you back. You're, you're walking with God. These are the people, these elders need saving, not just from themselves, but from, you know, the lack of guidance that they had in their childhood, the lack of understanding, the lack of patience, the lack of love, the lack of compassion that they were shown. That's what they need saving from. I don't even think they know that. They're giving you advice from like how they were growing up, but they just, they need to heal. They're, they, they're the ones that need saving. These are the same elders that they come to you with like, oh, I'm going to save you. I have the best advice. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can sit down and think about what you need for you. Give yourself that best advice. Hunter, track down your fears and desires. This is, you do this all the time. If you're being triggered by something, you're able to figure out why and you get to the bottom of it. It's like, okay, why am I feeling this way? Okay, boom, I got it. What's the next task within me that I need to heal? Boom, got it. To them, it's just like, we don't healing here. I don't think so. Therapy, we don't believe in that. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll get these then. I gotta change it, hold on, because this one keeps getting commercials and it's getting, um, I don't know, bothersome, I guess. So let me just change it. I like this one. That one's good. Alright, um, so yeah. For this entire week, I kept hearing that. It was like about elders, um, and they wanted their respect. And like the admiration as if like they're all knowing and wise, but what they're talking about is actually like poison. It makes, it, it doesn't it make sense. They're talking to talk. And if you're younger than these elders, uh, it's it irritating them that you know more and they're supposed to be you know, at a certain age already, and they, they're still having the same mindset as they did in, like, their 20s, their teens, their 30s, whatever. Like, no, there's there hasn't been any growth with them spiritually, mentally, emotionally, right? There hasn't been. And so the fact that here comes you, someone younger than them, all-knowing, all-wise, it, it bothers them. It's like it offends them. So now here they come, like a, a herd of antelope, right? They're coming towards you, like, um, to bum rush you, to, like, stampede on your progress, stampede on your words. It's like you're outdoing them. And that's, the, to them, they can't have that because they're the elders. They're supposed to be the one with the advice. They're supposed to be the one that's connected. They're supposed to be the one that's wise. So now they want to give you, like, advice, but that shit, is, it's, it's bad. It's poison. Oh, my gosh. Hiding their identity in plain sight. Yeah, these people, it's like, they don't want you to know that 
they feel some type of way that you, someone younger than them, knows more than they do or has progressed faster than them or has gone farther than them mentally, spiritually, emotionally, right? This is all about things that have to do within your vessel, your 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 body, your 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 home. They don't like that. They don't like that at all. They don't like the fact that they're stuck and stagnant. They need help. They need healing. But they want to come across as, you know, you're the one that needs healing or that they have the best advice. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Not only that, but if that was the case, why are you trying so hard to, like, stampede on my progress? Why are you trying so hard to make it seem like, like, why are you put, this is, these are people that they want to push themselves on you. They want to push their advice on you, right? If you, if they'll be like, oh, can I give you a piece of advice? And you're just like, no, thank you. They get offended, like, oh, you think you're too good for my, yes, I do. I, I do think I'm too good for your advice. Absolutely, you're right about that. Because the advice that you're giving me has no merit in this world today. It, it doesn't align with my purpose with the most high. So yes, yes, I do. I'm not going to sit here and take advice. Ooh, this is going to make me want to cry. It's like, why would you sit here and take advice? Oh my gosh. From people who are mad at the fact that you're actually like, it, ugh, I can't even, like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why would I take your advice? Look it. You're not in the shadows. You've overcome the shadows within you, around you, surrounding you. Those shadows, they're afraid of you now. They're afraid of their shadows. Identity theft? Look. Identity theft on top of Lord. They really want to make it seem like they're the ones that can save people. This group of people really want to be the ones that are seen as wise and conscious and tapped in and whatever the case may be, right? But if that's the case, then what your life, it's like, look at the way you are, the way you act, the way you present yourself, the way you talk, the way you think, the way you teach, the way you preach, look, right? But they want to make it seem so bad that they're not like, I don't, they're really bothered at the fact that somebody younger than them has gotten farther with their spirituality, their faith, their emotions, their mind, their, their soul. They want to make it seem like you're the one that needs saving. I had a dream and I talked about this dream a couple times already, but I had a dream um, where I was in a church or like a building and my mom was there and her pastor was there and he had like his hand on my stomach and he was like go back to where you came from and for a while I thought it was about colonization which it is it's like um to the side of a it's like a coin both sides are true right so that's true but at the same time it was like they were trying to do like some sort of exorcism on me there's like a group of people that they really want to believe that you need saving, that you're possessed, that you're this, you're that, because they feel some type of way that what you have is not theirs. So they want to make it seem like they know more than you. It's so weird. Hold on. All right. I'm back. Um, identity theft. Yes. Okay. These three to five people these aunts, uncles, grandparents, parents, cousins, siblings, they're all older than you. Identity theft, Lord. But yeah, my kid's like going through a sticker phase right now. They wanted to steal the connection that you had with the divine. Hold on. Yeah, so now that I'm getting to a really important part, I'm gonna be getting a lot of distractions, all right? Um, it's basically the same thing. Now that you get into a really important part in your journey, they want to come out of nowhere, out of the woodworks and stampede on that progress. And I've been saying this from the beginning. They want to come and stampede on your progress. Yeah, my kid's going through a sticker phase. Um, they, with identity theft and Lord, they wanted to steal the connection that you had with God, the divine, because they, they knew, they knew, if they're older than you, they knew that you were special from the get-go. 
right? But there's also something with these people, these three to five people, because you remember their inner child is suffering from neglect. They need healing, right? So they don't have the attention that they have from society, their friends, their job, their family. They're not like the popular ones, I guess. There's something that with your spiritual gift, they want it for themselves because they want a stage. They want the world to look at them. They want admiration. They want love. They want to be popular. They want to be the gifted one, right? It doesn't matter if you're their child, their niece, their nephew, their grandchild. It doesn't matter. They wanted to steal what you had. And also, not on, on top of that, because they knew who you were going to be from the beginning. And that made them feel some type of way because, again, these were people that were older. So to them, it's just like, wow, how does somebody younger than us already get all of that? And we've been alive for however long, right? It's like they feel like it's just not fair. It's not right. Honestly, they think that there is a mistake, that God made a mistake, right? I feel like this also ties in with the video that I made that your family didn't deserve your family didn't think that you deserve to be happy because of the way you look. They also feel like you don't deserve this because of the way you look. You could look different than them. You could just live your life different than them. You could just believe things and different than them. But your beliefs are in tune with the divine. All right? It's just, these could be people that within your family that are in a clique. Like you're like the black sheep of the family. And because you're not like them, they just don't think it's possible that you could have the spiritual gift. They knew from the very beginning that you were special. There's three to five people. There's three women and two men. They knew from the beginning that you were special. And that made them feel some type of way because, again, they wanted the stage. And here you come. You didn't have to do anything. And here you are. You're on your stage. They want to make sure that you don't fully walk up on that stage. So they're going to try and um, impede, stampede on your progress. I'm, I'm like... Stickers like everywhere. Um, so they wanted to steal your connection. Like um, they knew who your true identity was. It was somebody of faith, somebody connected, right? Somebody with the spiritual gift. They wanted to like. This goes into another video that I did. Um, something about how there was like a, a man and a woman, they wanted to keep you polluted because if you were polluted, you couldn't really walk in your divine spiritual gift, your faith, right? Um, you couldn't, you know, it, it would give them even more like, oh yeah, this person needs to be saved and this person needs to be saved and this person needs to be saved. Meanwhile, this group of elders, they're the ones that really need to be saved, but they wanted you to be seen as the one that needed to be saved, Right. Lo and behold, now that the tables are turned, like who you really are is shining and who they really are, just people that are sad and miserable, right? They've been hiding their identity in plain sight, that they need to be saved. They were trying to steal your identity, your connection with God. These these are elders. These are you know these people. Um these are older, they're they're older than you. They they are. You have the letter I, somebody's first, last, middle, initial, the name of a word or a place. Um, they are being haunted. Yeah, they're being haunted. Um, and it's funny because they think that you're messing with them and you're not even doing anything. Hold on. All right, I should be good for now. What was I saying? Um, my coffee. Yeah, you're not even doing anything. Like, you're just literally, you, you wake up, you do what God tells you to do, and then you go to sleep. And then you wake up, and then you do, that's all you're doing. You're minding your own business. You're minding your own, your job. You're minding your own family. You're minding your own friends. You're minding your own life. Whatever, you're just focused on the task at hand. Becoming connected with the divine and focusing on how you're healing, tracking down your fears and your desires, that's all you're doing. But I, I really do feel like these people think that you're like targeting them or attacking them, but it's just their own demons that they've never thought they had for some reason. But now that they're like being forced to like look at themselves, all of a sudden, oh, I'm being attacked and being attacked. No, these are things that have been inside of you suppressed, but you've been ignoring them. And now that God is forcing you to look within yourself, I'm being attacked and being attacked. No, you're not. 
Not everything is witchcraft, okay? Not everything. Not everything is attack. A lot of the stuff is self-imposed. This is self-imposed, right? And I feel like that goes in tie that ties in with that one dream I had. Um, and again, this keeps coming up. This dream that I had where I was like in a building like a church, and I saw my mom there, and she was with her pastor, and he had his hand on my belly. And he was yelling, Go back to where you came from. Like these people, they, they want to believe that you're possessed or some shit like that. Like they, they think that you're attacking them. You're not doing anything. You're just minding your own business. But they're telling everybody that you're attacking them. It's like, we need to have, you know, she needs, she needs work done. Pastor, pastor, or, you know, whatever. She, she needs help. She needs to be saved. She's being a, she's being taken. Like what? What are you talking about? Like, you could just be at home watching TV, minding your own business, eating your snacks. Pastor, pastor, I'm being attacked. By what? Like, be honest, by what? Go ahead, tell the pastor, by what, right? Yourself. These are self-imposed, like, feelings and demons and thoughts and whatever they've been suppressing, now they're being forced to look at it, but they can't, right? They can't. It's like, I can't handle this. But meanwhile, you've been doing the work for years and years and years and years and years. You've been doing the work. And now you're at a point where you just do what God tells you. If God's telling you to take a break, you take a break. If God tells you to go outside, you go outside. If God tells you to, you know, go to work, you go to work. Like, whatever God tells you, you just do it. But you're not hurting anybody. You're just minding your own business. Your life shows it. Like, you're at, you're such, you're at peace. You're calm. You're relaxed. You're balanced. Pastor, pastor, my life is in turmoil. I'm being attacked. I'm being attacked. The collective, the collective. Right? Which is weird, too, because people are just like, but the collective is like that. Right? They want these people, these three to five people, it's three women and two men. They want so bad for somebody to be the culprit. They want, they want somebody to be the culprit, but... God is like, look, look in the mirror. That's all you have to do. Look in the mirror. And they're so bothered at the fact that they were trying to steal your identity, make sure that they could um, not tarnish, not taint, not dismantle your connection with the divine. It was They were trying to make sure that uh, because who you really are shows who they really are. And they knew from the very beginning, they knew what you were going to be. And that threatened them. Because who they really are, it, they cannot hide it from who you really are. Because you are with God. God doesn't like fakes. God doesn't like phonies. God has given you the, the, the sight and the wisdom to see who people really are. And they don't like that. They don't like it when who they are is being shown. And who they really are is a bunch of kids crying on a bus. Because they need somebody to save them. It's the whispers at night. I'm telling you, man. These people, they're being haunted. They are they really think they're being attacked. But it's just their real selves are coming to the surface. Right? Their real selves are coming to the surface. They can't hide this anymore. They can't suppress it. They can't fight it. God's like, it's time. You need to look at yourself. This is the jail. that This, who... <sighs> They think that they're being spiritually attacked, but it's actually a spiritual jail that they need to fight their way out of. It's themselves. It's like they're at war within themselves. This is what I mean. Spiritual jail is way worse than actual jail, right? Secret love affair. What is that about? Oh, um, this could just mean that you had to keep your secret, your, your relationship with the divine secret, like your healing journey secret. You couldn't, you, if you kept your healing journey and what you were doing, your light work, a secret, and then you kept that hidden and private, I can see why. Because these people were going to stop at nothing to make sure that that would not happen. So you were doing this in secret. You were having a secret love affair with the divine. And I don't mean anything like romantic, um, nothing inappropriate. It's just that you were keeping your relationship with the divine secret. You were doing your work in private, right? It's not like you were on social media like, all right, you guys, don't bother me because I have healing work to do today. It's not like that. 
Pizomiza. Yeah, these people were nosy because you knew that if these people knew what you were doing, they, they, I don't know, they're nosy and they're stingy. They think that your gift belongs to them or that it's not fair that you have this spiritual gift. Like they just don't think it's fair. And now that they know that you're walking in your purpose, they're nosy. They want to know what you're doing so that way they can stampede on your, your, your um, journey. They want to impede on it. They want to. They want to know what you're doing so they can like stop it. They want to stop it and they want to take it. Right? Go back to where you came from. It's like they want you to be who you were before you started your healing journey. It's like God, childhood traumas. It's like God is forcing them to come out of the rock that they've been hiding under. Right? It's like you are shining so bright that they're being forced to come out of the darkness that they've been hiding under, the rock that they've been hiding under. It's like your light is physically dragging them out. And they're like, no, no. we don't." It's like a vampire when it hits the daylight. They're like, <sighs> right, hissing and all that. It's like the light burns, the light burns. We just want to go back in hiding. We want to go back in our dark rock. Leave us alone. And God's like, no, no, you can't do this anymore. Listen with your third eye. Yeah, that's what you're doing. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. Not only that, but whatever, the work that you're doing, you don't talk about it. You don't post about it. You don't brag about it. And they, they want to know so bad how it is that you're, you're able to like, how did you find this connection? How did you realize who you were? Don't worry about it. It's a secret. Don't worry about it. You know the secrets of the world. <laughs> and it's funny because I was just talking about um, how I've been like planet hopping <laughs> in my dreams lately. So I just think that's funny how shit just pops in my head. All right. Um, I don't know. Let me get a couple more and then I'll jump into some tabro. Tabro, tabro. Bam. Um, let me see. Yeah. They just feel some type of way. They're like offended because they can't walk on stage with you, right? Also, <coughs> <coughs> wow, excuse me. Also, they're offended that you won't take their advice. I, you, the letter U could be somebody's first, last, middle, the initial, the name of a word, or a place. So we have I, you. Huh. Let's see if anything else comes out. Change, 555, five, five, something new is coming. Yeah. Um... You're, you're being more connected. You're creating positive changes in your life, brand new. New things are happening. Um, but the more new things that you bring into your life, it, it's, um, how do I explain this? It's like, uh, it's like a balance, all right? So the more positive changes that happens in your life, it's, it's shifting the energy around you. It, it, it's like, um, it has to, all right. I'm not talking about, I guess not really balance, but it, it's like, it's shifting everything around you. You know how, uh, I don't even know. It's like a puzzle. You know how, like, if you try to pick up a puzzle, a puzzle that's already been done, right? So to them, they already built a puzzle, a picture, right? This is these elders, these three to five elders, these three women and five uh, um, three women and two men. They're all karmics, by the way. They had already built a, a picture out of puzzle pieces, right? But here God comes, right? And in order for you to, you you have to build a new puzzle. You have to build a new picture. A new paradigm shift is happening, right? But in order for that to happen, the puzzle picture that they created has to be, you know how when you pick up a puzzle that's been already finished and it like falls to pieces? It's like that. Their puzzle, their picture that they've built together to keep a certain image intact is falling to pieces. It's crumbling, right? 
And that is happening simultaneously while you're building your puzzle piece, while you're building your picture together. That both of these things have to happen simultaneously because who you're building, your your image, who you are, your connection with the divine, as that is building, as that picture is building, this has to break apart because they're not, you cannot have one without the other, right? You cannot be a butterfly and they be a caterpillar at the same time. They're being forced to change. God is making them look at who they are and they can't, I don't even think that they know what's going on, which is another thing. Like they want to be spiritually tapped in. They want to be wise. They want to give advice, but they don't even see what's happening in front of them because if they did, they would know that this is, this change, it's not an attack on them. This is for their highest good. They don't see that. They think that this change, that they're, the puzzle that they built their entire life, this specific image, it's crumbling. This is an opportunity for them to actually heal, for them to dive deep within themselves, to figure out what the heck is going on within themselves, right? It's like whether they have marriages, children, jobs, careers, businesses, whatever's going on, it's like who they are anymore, it, it's no good. It's no good. It's no good. It's time to change, time to evolve, time to heal. Childhood traumas, it's the whispers at night. They are being haunted. You're telling me you're giving me advice on healing, but you've been depressed for 40 years? How is that possible? How is that possible? How are you depressed for 40 years, but you're you're at peace, you're connected, you're, you're with the divine? Tell me how that makes sense. If you were so at peace, if you had such faith, you would not be battling demons every day. It's fighting with depression every day. Oh, it's the enemy. No, it's yourself. Figure out why you're so depressed. They share the same secret as Cersei and Jamie Lannister would take it to the grave. They know. They know. Something's going to happen in their childhood trauma and they have to uh, have a certain image to make sure that their childhood traumas don't reflect their self-made image. But their self-made image is false. It's got holes and it's just it's unhealed and it's toxic. Whatever happened in their childhood, whatever happened in their past, they, they all shared some secret, right? And they wanted so bad to where their childhood traumas would not reflect what they present themselves in society. And here you come, you were born. They knew what your purpose was. And that was like a terrifying to them because it's like who you really are. You would see what happened to them. You would see who they are. You would see what they're trying to hide. They can't have that because they had already built a, an image out of puzzle pieces, right? This piece here goes here. This piece goes here. They had already built an image and they wanted to maintain it. Not caring that they had to suppress their, their not heal, be toxic, suppress their, in it, their childhood traumas, neglect their crying inner self, right? They wanted to be seen as someone who had already figured out. These people, they wanted the stage. They wanted the admiration, the popularity. But who you are coming into who you are, it would show that these people... They, they're the ones that need healing. But I'm telling you, as God is helping you build the puzzle to connect with him more and more and more, the, the picture that they created, those puzzle pieces are crumbling. It's like God is putting you together, and at the same time, God is lifting their puzzle up, and it's just crumbling. But they really want to believe that there's a culprit. It's crazy because they, they talk about faith and, you know, being connected to God. But they can't see that this is God's work. This is what God is doing for them, not to them. Like, how how is it that you believe in God, but everything bad that happens in your life, you think it's an attack? You think it's witchcraft? You think you think it's somebody else doing this? That's not the case. Sometimes bad, sometimes God breaks things down in your life so you can build it up stronger. This is what God is doing to their life. They're, he's tearing these false towers that they have built so they can, so these people can build it back up from the ground up properly with a proper, healthy, stable foundation. But in order for them to do that, they're going to have to go within and heal. They don't want to do that. That's not your fault. That's not your problem. You can help that your, your light triggers their demons. And that's another thing. The more you shine, the more you shine bright, 
the more their their suppressed and hidden demons are coming to the light. That's another reason why their towers are being dismantled. They want that was the word taint. They wanted to taint your your divine relationship with God by tainting you physically, tainting you mentally, tainting you emotionally, whatever it was. They wanted you to be so tainted that you could never get to your connection with the divine. That's what they were doing with identity theft. They were trying to steal your identity with the divine by tainting it. So one day you would be like, God, are you there? And God would be like, the number you have dialed has been disconnected, right? They don't like being alone. They can't be alone. Yeah. They, they, they can't, um, these are people that they always need to be around like other people or around each other. Like, I don't know. There's some sort of like deep, deep fear that they have when they're alone, because when they're alone, it, it makes them think about things that they don't want to think about. It makes them see that things that they don't want to see. They don't like being alone because then they're, they get haunted. They get memories. They get flashbacks. They get thoughts, intrusive thoughts. It's the whispers at night, right? They don't, I don't know, man, these people, oh. let me get some tarot and then I'm going to call it. <clears throat> it's cool it's, it's it's crazy to me because god has been trying to talk to them god has been trying to talk to them but god's like hey look at this it's time to heal this and meanwhile, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, somebody's trying to talk to me. It's witchcraft, it's ghosts, it's demons, it's the voices, the voices, oh my gosh, oh my God. And God's like, yo, I'm just trying to tell you to heal yourself. And they're like, oh my God, oh my God. It's like healing is painful to them. <laughs> we have the nine of swords reverse. Yeah, you see, they want to give you advice because they think that you need healing, but you're in the Nine of Swords reverse. What healing? You're not worried about anything. You're not stressed out about anything. You're not, you're at peace with yourself. I mean, your life speaks for your, your life speaks for itself so to the point where you don't even have to speak upon your life. And because you're not speaking upon your life, they're like, oh, the collective must be going through something because they don't talk about their life. Yeah, because we don't have to. We don't have to. If we talked about our lives, we're just going to see how jealous you are or how bothered you are or how offended you are. Why would we talk about our lives to you? Like, I don't understand. Why would we talk about... I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Like... Seven of Cups. They don't like being alone. They can't be alone. Um, be alone. Seven of Cups reverse. These people are stuck in some sort of delusion that, uh, at this point, hold on. Um, darn it! What was I? Oh, darn it! What was I gonna say about the Seven of Cups reverse? They don't like being alone. They can't be alone. Um, I don't know. Um, they're like delusional, I guess. They really are because they don't see what's happening in front of them as for their highest good. But they're still stuck in like the state of mind like, I'm being attacked, I'm being attacked. Oh my gosh, I'm being attacked. We're being attacked, right? I also feel like these people, they are, they, they get together, right? And they're like, I'm being attacked. I'm being attacked too. I'm being attacked too. Like, you guys are hella delusional. Like, don't you see what's going on? Like, like, how are you so triggered and then you still think that it's an attack? Like, why? You need to figure out why you're so triggered. Like, go back to your childhood traumas and heal that. Like, you guys are delusional. Like, there's no way every bad thing in your life happens is, like, an attack. It's impossible, right? Like, why would God give you a job that you're not fit for? Oh, we didn't get the job because someone did witchcraft on us and we're being attacked. No, you're just not fit for the job. You're not where you need to be emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Where's your faith? You're not fit for the job. 
So they're offended because you got the job that this job was made for you. And the fact that you're actually in this job, like they're mad because they didn't get your job. Like King of Wands in reverse. This is one of them. Yeah. It's like, why would you get this job and all you want to do is sleep around? You're not focused. You're not looking at the task at hand. You're putting all your energy in things that don't matter. Like, I don't under, like, are you really that delusional? You can't see? It's an attack. It's an attack. You're a king of wands reverse. You're not fit for the job. Like, but they can't admit that to themselves. They can't admit that. Oh, this is a knight of wands. They can't commit. Oh my goodness. You're not fit for the job. <laughs> you can't, like, why would God give you a spiritual gift when you can't even commit to healing yourself? That makes no sense to me. They're delusional. This group of people, they're delusional. Like, that's our job. That's our job. You can't even commit to yourself. What are you talking about? So we have a Knight of Wands out here. Knight of Wands reversed. They're, what is this, a sticker? Where did this come from? Oh my goodness, all these stickers. I feel like that fell from my armpit though. Um, we have the Knight of Wands reversed. They don't like being alone, they can't be alone. They're just bitter. Hold on, oh, I'm back. That's all, they're just bitter. Like. It's weird because they really, they wanted your gift, but they wanted your gift so bad, right? But the thing is, they couldn't, like, do the work to even, like, have the opportunity to say that we deserve this. Now, they are saying we deserve this, we deserve this, but they don't deserve this because they can't commit to the work that you did that you're doing for this gift that is rightfully yours. This is your gift from the beginning, but they think that they deserve your gift. And on top of that, they're not even doing the work that they need to be doing. I found lit up, sorry. If this cuts off, then it cuts off and I'll just upload it because I'm already like past an hour. <sighs> Look at that. The King of Wands did come out in reverse too on top of that. King of Wands reverse. <laughs> she said, oh no. <laughs> if you have the Ten of Swords reverse. I feel like they're saying that your life is like horrible. So they're like, here, let me, let me give you some advice. And I feel like, you know what? I just seen it in my head. They're creating a stage. The stage was not made for them. It was made for you, but they're creating a stage. And what they're doing on this stage, they're going to turn to you and be like, because um, they've already been telling the community, everybody, that you're like in the Ten of Swords. But you're in the Ten of Swords reverse. You're not bothered by anything. You're at peace. You're healing, right? There's positive change within yourself. You're focused. You're, you're just enjoying your privacy, right? But what they're doing is that they're building a stage. And they're going to be like, and then they're going to have everybody see this as well. They're going to be like, everybody gather around, gather around. Watch us help this collective. Watch us heal this collective. Meanwhile, you're just like, what? Like, you, you, you're in the nine of swords reverse, ten of swords reverse. What do you have to be worried about? What healing? They're just mad because, oh my God, this is so annoying. Like you're, you're not, you're minding your own business. You're not stressed out. You're not bothered. Meanwhile, they can't sleep. And this wasn't even the, look at spiritually blocked, but this wasn't even the deck that I was using. I was using this deck. 
they're spiritually blocked, especially this King of Wands in reverse. So this could be a Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, Masculine out of the group. Because remember, there's three karmic women and there's two karmic men. So one of the men could be a Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, Masculine. Or both men are, but um, that's kind of irrelevant because they're spiritually blocked. And then they're building a stage so they can be like, Watch us give this person advice and then watch our advice work. What? Like your your advice is trash. It's basura. What else? Queen of Cups reverse. Yeah. So one of these women is a Queen of Cups reverse. She is very, very irritated and bothered because you're not irritated and bothered. This could be a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, mask, uh, feminine, <laughs> masculine, feminine. So this could be a mom or your mom. Whoever this emotionally unstable woman is, she's very, very toxic. And that's what I'm talking about. We have a King of Wands reversed and a Queen of Cups reversed. Their toxicity, narcissism, like uncommitted, spiritually blocked cells are being shown. And the more you shine, the more you just mind your own business, the more you do whatever it is that, you know, God tells you to do, the more unhinged they become. It's because, and it's so crazy because they can't not be unhinged, right? They can't. They can't. Because part of the picture that they have built out of puzzle pieces was like a, a massive downplay on who you were. A massive, massive downplay on your character, who you were, who, who you were going to grow up to be, um, your likes, your dislikes, like everything, everything, right? That was like the foundation of the picture that they built. But come to find out who you really are is being shown and it's crumbling the picture that they built of themselves, of you. So the more you shine, the more unhinged they become. It's, it's so like... Uh, And now they want to come give you advice. But the advice is bad. It has no merit. It's really just so they can impede on your progress. They want to give you advice. First of all, you're not even going to take the advice. You know the advice is trash, okay? Second of all, they're really, really hoping that the advice that you give them, the trash advice that they give you, you will take it and put it to use in your life. But that trash advice is just to make you more poison or to make you unhealed or like they got me doing this, like... These people are so triggered and they want you to be triggered. Look, four of cups reverse. Four of cups reverse. They're looking for some sort of opportunity to like impede on your progress. It's like, how can we, how can we stop the collective from going any further? Because at this point, they don't have many puzzle pieces left. It's like, they're like dangling from the last puzzle pieces. The tower reverse, they're really trying their hardest to avoid this tower moment. They're, they're trying their hardest. So they're trying to figure out how can they, any opportunity, whatever it is, right? Even if it's just a breadcrumb, like, please, sir, man, please just have a breadcrumb on how to stop your progress. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's like they, a, a tower moment to them is like the world ending. It's an attack. But if they would know any better, if they had faith in the Most High, if they actually had faith and they trusted in God, the Most High, they would know that not all tower moments are bad. And in fact, a tower moment is an act of God. Depending on where you are with your karma, it's either a good tower moment that's for your highest good or a bad tower moment. It's, it's for you to face the consequences of your actions. And they know that part of this tower moment is the consequences of their action, but they're supposed to use this to better themselves. And they're trying to prevent that from happening. Two of Cups. That's you. Your connection with the divine. You could even be in a healthy partnership. But these people, they're all partnering up together. They're trying to find out how to, you know, stop their foot in the door from closing on them. All right. I think that's it. The moon. You know what's happening. The Eight of Swords. What is that? Reverse. 
Six of Cups, the Emperor. With the Moon and the Eight of Swords reverse, um, by you using your intuition, you've unbound yourself from the bonds of whatever image that they were trying to put on you, build on you. They don't like that. Also, they were trying to keep it a secret that all you had to do to unbind yourself was go within yourself. They wanted that to be a secret. Why did I just lisp? It's a secret. Somebody could have a lisp. But anyways, they wanted that to be a secret. All you have to do is to go within yourself and then you'll be free. Just go within yourself and you'll be free. Listen to God and you'll be free. That's it. They don't like that. But the main people that are really, really peeved off is this King of Wands reverse and this Queen of Cups reverse. This King of Cups, this King of Wands reverse, he does more action. Um, I had a dream about a preacher. Remember, if you've seen that video, it was like the preacher, he was like so passionate and blah, 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 blah. But it was like this preacher was like a false person because all the lights on the altar just went out one by one by one. And which was representative of the things that he was losing in his life, money, a house. Um, what was the other one? I forgot what the other one was, but it's like this person, because of how passionate they come across about things, it makes them seem like they're smart. It makes them seem like they're caring. It makes them seem like they're stable, but they're not. Anyways, um, I'm going to go eat a bagel now. So I hope this video helps. Hope this gives you clarity, guidance, all that good stuff, yada, yada. If anybody wants a personal reading, email me. Um, <clears throat> have a great weekend because it's Friday. So bye.